uh, I was walking around with a microphone on my own around Auschwitz and the three other Marquis, uh, Tobias Morgan, Blue and Anna Wittek, uh, actually you see Anna Wittek in one of the shots in the train, were going around the camp on their own. So we actually didn't know who, what else the, uh, the other person is doing and then on the editing table all four people brought, I gave my commentary or actually it's not even a commentary, it was just a, just a kind of a uh, thought process which was going in my head when, when I was walking around Auschwitz and the three of them did their own cinematography separately and they all just brought together it on the editing table and uh, 11 minute film came out of it. So anything that you want to respond to? I know there is a, a very stark collection, very uh, different collection of films here. The idea was to basically just look at these different kinds of filmmaking processes where films are explorative in nature and not really telling us a story or trying to narrate things for us but are trying to discuss something or uh, study something or research something. So film, um, or documentary film per se, but a film does not just stay as uh, an object that uh, informs us or entertain, uh, entertains us, or e not even an art piece, but a contemplation. So it becomes a kind of a thought process uh, of the world around us and what we see around us and whatever is happening around us. Second uh, Armenian movie. What was it about? Like you saw the film? Yeah, I. Okay. Okay. So the film was in 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 its. I, I'm just asking because I I wanted to confirm that you were here and many of the was. film. Uh, so what uh, Palacia is trying to do there is perhaps do an ethnography of how these people are living uh, through various seasons, and uh, he's not really making a narrative film or trying to tell us a story, and that is what. Uh, throws us off because there's no story and we are looking for something will happen in the end. But uh, uh, there's, there's a logic to the sequence of these films because in the beginning, in the first film, Trinity Minha in her own voice says that we always try to tag a meaning to an image. So in, in the second film, perhaps there is no meaning as such, but actually just looking at the Armenian people in their, uh, in how they live and how they struggle and and the entire film actually is around a kind of a struggle, trying to save the sheep, or which is a part of their livelihood. So the film is basically a, a, um, a group of people who are surviving through various seasons, and uh, um, a kind of a meandering uh, audiovisual around these people. Uh, if you notice, there is the wedding scene and the, the groom there in, in the photograph is actually where the, the point of entry of the filmmaker is. He starts, he befriended this man and wanted to talk, talk to him and then ended up making a film about this particular group of people who live there. Um, his other films are also very experimental in the, way, in the sense that he is using audiovisual as a medium to understand people rather than the other way around. Uh, that is, have an understanding of the people already and uh, or, or have the understanding of the audiovisual um, already. Uh, so he is he is trying to explore and see what kind of uh, images that we are, we are used to making and what, what can they be more than just meaningful images. So it, it throws off, like in the first film also, blank screens appear all of a sudden. There are silences within the soundtrack. So our invocatory desire is disrupted. We are even feeling as an audience, why is a filmmaker not telling us what these people are doing, where they, uh, what are the feelings of these people. This is like trying to construct a narrative, uh, speaking for people rather than, the, rather than them speak for themselves. Uh, so have a look at uh, Palacian's other films. They are freely, freely available online. He is... Uh, uploaded most of his films on YouTube and uh, quite an interesting interplay of audiovisual life philosophy. Uh, when, when was this film made? Long. Right? This film was uh, released in 1975. But he's a filmmaker of 70s and 80s, so he's working on 35mm, 16mm 
not using digital technology. And uh, there was a little bit of transfer, uh, problem in the transfer because I had given an AVI extract and they converted it into the DVD. So there were places when, where the, the contrast was, got washed out because of the quality. But uh, we don't have the facility of the 35mm projection here. Otherwise, it would be a different experience altogether.